So today in Foundations of Math 10, we're talking about 2.3. It's a lab <clears throat> dealing with measuring an inaccessible height. And I'm not sure if you look at that picture like me and, and kind of get a little dizzy almost. I don't know. It's kind of a weird picture. <clears throat> like you're lying on your back in the middle of a forest. And you're looking up at the sky and all these trees coming at you. I guess they're going away from you, but it kind of looks a little creepy. Anyways, um, how can we use this map? to measure heights that we can't actually climb up and, you know, take a measuring tape and, and directly measure. Well, we can use uh, this trigonometry. We can use the tangent ratio that we've been studying to do that. And some of you have said that you've done this uh, sort of thing already in science, which is great. So these are the clinometers that um, have already been made for you in, in, in some cases. And, and uh, depending on what year this class is happening, we make them or we have them made, but they kind of look like this. It's basically a large protractor, and you kind of make a larger version of your protractor in your geometry set, and you tape a little straw to the to the uh, bottom edge of the protractor, poke a hole right here, and have some kind of washer or weight on the end of a string that can hang down freely uh, from this center point right here in the exact uh, middle there. So <clears throat> this clinometer, and if you think about the word incline, right, or decline, okay, that's where this comes from, a clinometer, it measures an angle of incline, okay, or, uh, or decline, that, that word C-L-I-N, that, that root there, so it's a clinometer, measuring incline in this case, well, actually, we're technically, this is measuring decline, but we'll talk about that in a second, so this is how it's used right here, okay, um, so you're, you're standing, and you're looking through the straw, at the very tip of an object. So if it's the tree, if it's a tree outside, or if it's the flagpole, or the height of the school, or the gym, or whatever it is, you're you're having in in view here through the straw the very tip of the object to be measured. And then what's going to happen is when you look up at that, there's going to be a certain me angle measure that's measured on your clinometer. Okay. Now in this case, it looks like it's about 40 degrees. This this angle from here to here is 40 degrees. Okay, so we're going to use that angle and we're going to put that on a right triangle sketch of the situation. But I guess the question is, um, where does the angle go? And if we look closely at this diagram right here, not too close I guess, but if we look at this diagram, here's an example of a person that is looking through the clinometer and this is the kind of exploded view here of, or the, the uh, enlarged view of this and this is 40 degrees, so just like that picture above. So where does that 40 degrees go is the question, because here's the right triangle, right, along here. The tree is uh, assuming, assumingly perpendicular to the ground, so we have a 90 degree angle here. Where does this 40 degrees go? Well, does it go right here, 40 degrees? It would look like it should go right here, because that's where the clinometer is. I do have a question for you, and maybe this might help. Okay, look at this one. A taller object, a taller object, is that going to give you a greater angle or a smaller angle? Like this totem pole here is quite a bit taller than the tree. So look at the comparison in angle. We have a smaller angle on the clinometer. You see that? So in a right triangle, and maybe these aren't, these aren't really drawn to scale, so maybe I'll just flip over to the notes here, and I'll draw this maybe to scale, okay? And you can draw this too, okay? Draw this in your notes. It's 2.3, okay, using a clinometer. And we'll draw two different situations here. So we'll draw, here's the here's a tree, okay? And it looks like this. And here's a, here's a line... Uh, a horizontal line from the observer to the tree. And here's the height of the tree. So here's the right triangle that we could draw. I'll just maybe highlight that in yellow. So there's our right triangle that we could draw. Now how are we going to label this? Well, obviously this is the right angle down here. This is the person that's standing here and holding the clinometer up, right, and looking through it. Here's the clinometer. So if the angle on the clinometer, let's say this one was the uh, 40 degrees, okay, 
And, and then person two over here, and I'm going to draw another diagram, uh, and let's say that they're measuring the height of a building, okay, that's really tall. So here's the building that's super tall, and this person is standing way over here, okay, holding that clinometer up. And I'll do my best to draw a straight line, but, okay, so here is the, uh, the line to the view of the top of the building, and here is the line, I'll do it red. Here's the horizontal line to the building, and of course, let's say this is the school or something like that, right? Windows, okay, so on, big door there. And so, uh, this is uh, this is the picture that might happen, but let's say these triangles look pretty much alike, right? So let's say that we have person three measuring the same school, same height, but they have a triangle that looks like this with their clinometer. And their clinometer is on quite a steep angle, yielding a very small angle compared to this kilometer. Because this one could be 40 degrees as well. This one maybe is like 12 degrees. So my question is, if you look at these situations, and I guess I didn't need to draw the tree here because I drew two of them here. But if this is a larger angle of 40 and this is a smaller angle of 12, does it make sense that this is 40 and this angle is 12? Does that make sense? Because as you get closer to the building, the angle on that clinometer, let me just show you again, the angle as you get closer and look up higher, you see, you look, you're looking up at a very tall structure, the angle gets uh, smaller. So which angle of the red triangle here or the green triangle, which angle is getting smaller in, in these triangles? Maybe something up here? Look at this right here. There's the angle in the red triangle up there. And it looks like this angle in the green triangle is quite a bit smaller there. This one, this angle, has gotten bigger. So where do you think that that 12 degrees should go in the diagram? Anyone? Yeah, I know it's an easy question. Should be easy anyways. The 12 degrees goes here. And the 40 degrees from the chronometer goes here. So where does this 40 degrees go then? Here or up here? It always goes up at the top here. All right? Now, how do you find this, this angle down at the bottom? If it's not the same as on the clinometer, how do you find this angle? How can you determine it? Anybody? If you have 40 up here, and you have 90 here. How do you find this third angle in a triangle? Luke? Yes, these two angles here have to add up to 90. So it would be 50. Very good. Yes. Now, the because all angles, uh, the, the three angles in a triangle have to add up to what measure? 180, right? So if you've got 90 right here, then these two have to add up to 90 as well, because 90 and 90 is 180. Okay, all right, so this is not 12. What What is this down here on this other triangle? What's this angle measure? 90 minus 12 is 78. Okay, are you guys just sleepy this morning, or is this really hard, or too easy? Because if it's too easy, just go ahead and shout out the answers. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Okay? So, <clears throat> so let's say we have, this is the gym, okay? And someone is standing here, okay? And they're holding up a clinometer, 
and that clinometer looks like this. And this angle that they've measured right here is 37 degrees. So take a minute and label the two angles in this triangle. Okay, so if you have 37 degrees on the kilometer, it goes up in the top angle there, right? The top angle here. It's 37, so 90 minus 37, 53. So labeling those um, uh, diagrams, those triangles are important. The other thing that's going to be important is answering this question right here. Given that this person is 1.45 meters tall, and you're going to have to measure um, your height from the ground to your eyeball for this activity, so you're going to have to measure this. And this 1.45 meters tall, that's from the ground um, to their eyes. Okay, and So that's this, this measurement right here. See that? 1.45, from where they're looking through the clinometer. How tall is the building? Well, we need some more information. What, what is one piece of information here, knowing what you know from 2.2? What's one piece of information that we can actually determine in this situation, that we could actually measure, that we would maybe need to find the height of the building? Okay, yeah, the distance from, from the person to the building. Very good. So let's say that this person is uh, 7.68 meters. So that's 768 centimeters, 7.68 meters. Good, that's the piece of information that we need. Now, how do I go about solving this? Now remember, I want the total height of the building. Any idea on how we could find at least part of that height? Okay, so we can use the tangent function. The tangent of some angle equals opposite over adjacent, right? So here's the opposite. That's actually from the top of the building to this point. That's the opposite side length of this right triangle. And this is the adjacent side, yeah. So if I filled this in, I would say tan of 53 equals the opposite side, let's make that equal x, over the adjacent side, or divided by the adjacent side, which is 7.68. So x is going to equal then 7.68 times tan 53. You get your trusty calculator out, and you can do that on your calculator. You don't need to know how to do that in your head. And we have 10.19. Does that, does that make sense? 10 point, is that what you guys got? So 10.19 meters. Now, is that the height of the building? It's not. No, why not? Somebody over here that said no. Why not? What else we got to do? Okay, yes, exactly. We got to add up this space right here, because we haven't found that, but we know that this person is... 1.45 meters tall, so very good. So that is not the height of the building. We're not finished yet. Instead, we take 10.19 meters, and we add the 1.45 meters, which gets us what? 11.64 meters. Wow. Okay. Um, actually, that's amazing that this number came up like this, and I will tell you why later. I don't want to give you... Actually, I'll tell you now. That is the exact height, okay? And I'm giving you a little bit of a hint for your, your assignment. But years ago in physics class, we did a calculation of the height of from the ground to the fourth floor windows here by tossing items out the window. Yeah. And we measured, <clears throat> we timed how long it took them to fall. We use the Earth's gravitational acceleration and the time to calculate the height of the building. And it, it came out this, this window ledge right here. We didn't throw things out in the front. We actually threw them out in the back. But it's the same height, the window ledge. came out to exactly 11.64 meters. 
Uh, what did we throw out, throw out the window? We threw um, watermelon and um, other various large vegetables and computers. We gathered things. Uh, no, it's not allowed for you to do it. No, it's allowed for me to do it. We gathered different items throughout the semester building up to this experiment. Yeah, it was, it was fun. We had, to, we had to clear out a spot and we had to make sure that we collected all the garbage, that, all the debris that remained afterwards. It was actually, it was quite fun. Yeah, it was very good. All right, so any, any questions about this type of example right here? I digressed a little bit there. Any other questions? No? Okay, so this is the exact type of question you're gonna need to do for your activity and also for uh, section 2.3 in your text. So here is section 2.3. That's one of the questions that you're going to be doing right there. So right now, what I'm going to get you to do is questions 1 to 3 on this page 84 in your text. Uh, or is it 86? Uh, 86. Oh, weird. It's 84 in my text. Okay, digital version has a couple extra pages. All right. So 1 to 3. It should not take you long. I'm going to hand out the copy of the um, assignment, and I'm going to uh, give you your partners for this assignment. And then if we have any time, you might be able to get started a little bit on this assignment. I doubt we'll be able to go outside today, but we will uh, plan to go outside tomorrow to do this uh, assignment of measuring inaccessible heights.